So we've gone ahead and have drawn this wrench lying along the positive y axis and what we would like to do is establish coordinates for each end of the wrench. So the left end of the wrench is located at the origin so the coordinates are 0, 0, 0 and then the right end of the wrench would be located at coordinates 0, 0.30 meters comma zero. Now how did we know that? Well because the length of the wrench was 30 centimeters that's equivalent of course to 0.30 meters and it's lying exclusively on the positive y-axis. So the x and z coordinates would both be zero and then the y coordinate would simply be the length of the wrench. So that is the position point at the far right end as well as the far left end. What we need is the position vector. So that position vector is a vector drawn from the left end of the wrench to the right end of the wrench. And to get that position vector, we simply take the XYZ coordinates of the right end and subtract the XYZ coordinates of the left end. So for example, taking the X coordinates, we would have zero minus zero. For the Y coordinates, we would have 0.30 meters minus zero and the Z coordinates would be zero minus zero. And if we clean this up, we can see that the position vector of the wrench is zero 0.30 meters and then zero. So that's one piece of information we're going to need. Another piece of information is this other vector which represents the direction of the force. So let's just be clear here that the other vector given in the question, this 0, 3, negative 4, that's great, but that's not the force itself. That's the direction of the force. We actually don't know the components of that force. That's actually what we're looking for, or in fact, we're looking for the magnitude of the force. But right now, we don't know the components of that force. We only know the direction in which the force is pointing, as denoted by this vector here. Now, it turns out that it's going to be useful to find the angle between the direction of the force and the position vector. We're going to call that theta. And we can do that in the following manner by using a formula that you probably learned when studying the dot product. So here is that equation that's going to allow us to find the angle between the position vector of the wrench, which was r, and then we've introduced lowercase f to represent that other vector. Remember, that other vector was showing the direction of the force, not the force itself, so we've just called that lowercase f for now. And so, looking at this formula, you can see we need three things. We need the dot product, we need the magnitude of vector r, and we need the magnitude of that vector giving the direction of the force. We can perhaps begin with the dot product, and this would be a good review of dot products. We're going to take vector r and dot it with that directional force vector. And to do a dot product, you simply find the product of the x components of the vectors. So here it would be 0 times 0. And then you add that to the product of the y components. So here that would be 3 times 0 0.3. And then add that to the product of the z components. So here that would be negative 4 times 0. Now when you simplify this, you will see that the dot product, these go to 0, is simply equal to 0 0.9. So that's one thing we need. We'll put a little bubble around that. But we also need the magnitude of each vector. So why don't we go back and find the magnitude of vector r next. Remember, vector r is right up there on the top of the screen. And the magnitude of vector r would simply be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So for example, you would take the x component, you would square that, and then add that to the y component squared and then add that to the z component squared. Now this simplifies, doesn't it? Because you can see that you're just gonna end up with the square root of 0 0.3 squared, which of course is just 0 0.3. So that is the magnitude of vector r. We also need the magnitude of that directional force vector. Let's just go back up and look at those coordinates. It was 0, 3, and negative 4 right there. Those are the components, I should say. 0, 3, and negative 4. So here we go. We're going to have a square root of 0 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. When you simplify under the radical, you're going to get 9 plus 16, which is 25. And so we can see that the magnitude of that directional force vector is equal to 5. So we've got the magnitudes of the two vectors as well as the outcome of the dot product. Let's go ahead and plug them into that cosine equation. There we have it, and we can simplify the right-hand side. That just becomes 0 0.6. And then to find theta, we take the inverse cosine of that 0 0.6. And we can see that the 
angle between these two vectors was around 53.1 degrees. So just to summarize, we have the position vector going this way. We have a force going this way. We still don't know the magnitude of that force, but we now know that the angle between the position vector and the force is 53.1 degrees. Now, why do we need all that? Well, consider the following equation for torque. And this is out of the cross product, excuse me, the, uh, yes, indeed, the cross product section. Now, the question noted that the magnitude of the torque was 100 newton meters. We know that the magnitude of the position vector was 0 0.3 meters. We do not know the magnitude of the force. That's what we're looking for. And then now we know this angle theta, that was that 53.1 degrees. So it's very easy, isn't it, to solve for the magnitude of the force? Because now you're just going to divide both sides by 0.3 meters times the sine of 53.1 degrees. And that'll cancel those quantities out on the right hand side. And if you type the left side into your calculator, you should get approximately 417. That's going to be equal to the magnitude of the force. As far as the dimensions are concerned, we just divided Newton meters by meters. The meters would cancel, leaving us with, of course, Newtons, which makes sense because we just calculated a magnitude of force. So there it is, the correct answer to this question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so. Appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.